You're not a man. You're nothing more than a maniac. I'm not afraid of you. No politics here. Just good old-fashioned revenge. The movie Iron Man uh, really conceptualized what would be possible in nanotechnology. Uh, it shows uh, how we can imagine certain things we're able to do. You know, some of the features you know, in Iron Man may be far-fetched, but other features in Iron Man are probably a reality, I would say, in the next 20 to 30 years. As a matter of fact, uh, we develop a number of types of nanoparticles. Uh, you know, that looks fairly similar to the substance called extremis. Uh, one of the particles that we do, uh, it can amplify the optical detection sensitivity by 10 to the 14th fold. Okay, talking about 10 to the 14th fold, uh, eventually you come to the sensitivity of a single molecule. Uh, this is a project supported by U.S. Air Force. Okay, so it's it's an actual project. Uh, these are based on nanoparticles that can amplify the optical detection sensitivity by 10 to the 14. That's 100 trillion fold. The other area we're working on are these kind of targeted nanoparticles for therapeutics. Here at Emory, uh, in collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania, okay, we're developing these kind of nanoparticle contrast agents. Okay? Uh, these are agents that you can inject into the human body uh, two to three hours before surgery. So then you put like, the patient on the operating table. When the surgeon opens the body, uh, actually we do robotic surgery as well, we don't have to open the body. Uh, then the surgeon can visualize where the tumors are because these particles would be glowing. Okay, they glows, so therefore the surgeon know exactly where the boundary is, where to cut, where not to cut, and after you make the cut, whether you completely remove you know, the tumor, there's any residue tumor left. So, so this is the contrast agent based on nanoparticles that are, are, uh, are designed to go into the tumor. Okay, we start with dogs, now we, well, now we actually move into human patients. And amazingly, they work beautifully. Okay, we are having two clinical trials. One is lung cancer, the other is actually breast cancer, and they, 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 they both work very well. I think in reality, uh, there's an international effort, a huge international effort to develop nanotechnology for uh, applications in medicine, in biology, in energy, environmental sciences. The most amazing application probably going to be in the medical field, especially develop specialized nanoparticles uh, that can perform a specific task in the body in the beginning. Okay? So uh, maybe ultimately we can integrate these kind of functions into a multifunctional nanoparticle substance that would be able to do things like the extremists would do in the body. Uh, I think uh, the time frame probably is not that too long. For some of these specialized nanoparticles, I would expect 10 years, a decade, probably we can do it. Uh -huh. So some of the work we've been doing in uh, engineering these nanoparticles to visualize tumors, uh, we never expected they would work. Uh -huh. For some of the more science fiction-like things, it probably take 50 to 100 years. So, so I think uh, 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 I would say that the challenges are enormous. Okay? To design anything that would work inside the human body is an enormous challenge. The human body is immensely complex. However, you know, our imagination is also unlimited. So if we work together, okay, uh, I, I think uh, Certainly, in the next generation, we'll have some of these nanoparticles with specialized functions able to do very unusual things in the human body.